welcome back my gardening friends well turning the leaves into this lovely uh, material give you a close-up shortly is a long process you can cut that process down by half this is uh, probably three years old now but I harvest them and sift them after two years I'll show you the bays but this year my body said no to carrying 25 of these one ton bags uh, from where I collect my leaves uh, to my allotment and it's been so wet that leaves would have been heavy anyway and getting up the grass towards my plot has been near on impossible with a wheelbarrow just lately so in a way I'm glad that uh, my body said no and there's no good uh, doing too much uh, time management body management doing a little bit here and there uh, does pay off because uh, it just keeps you motivated you want to be able to enjoy coming uh, to your allotment and growing spaces but uh, because I'm only going to collect this is the first bag I think there's two more bags that the householders have piled up for me so I'm going to pick those up when it dries out a little bit but I'm going to show you uh, I'm not actually going to save them and mulch them down I'm going to use them around my growing spaces uh, in the compost bins etc so let's go and have a look and see how many ways we can use these leaves without uh, too much uh, too much hassle and issues so we always start off with these and like I said I normally collect about 20 to 25 uh, one I normally collect up to 25 of these uh, uh, one ton bags and uh, you can't compact them too much else you can't carry them but realistically one of those if you get 25 of those bags you'll end up with one bag of uh, this material and it is really nice stuff this is unsifted this is well it goes through my uh, my trommel homemade trommel and uh, just takes the bigger bits out it keeps it in focus so let's go and have a little look at what else I'm going to be uh, doing with my leaves this time I put a nice thick layer in my temporary compost bins these are the bins that I use once my main worm bin uh, is uh, full I have topped it up with manure and leaves and I did use some green manure here white clover but I think it's more for a summer uh, green crop uh, to mulch those beds to give those beds a rest but it isn't very many of us that can give our beds a rest uh, there's my asparagus I've just started to put a few leaves on there and I've also added some into my underground worm farms that'll be ready now uh, to accept some more food ready for the worms to munch on throughout the uh, cooler months using leaves on our beds is just a natural way the trees drop their leaves around uh, their bases and around the tops of the soil to uh, reduce the weeds and to stop all the seeds growing so that they uh, nothing else can compete for all the nutrients that the trees need so it's nature's way of uh, mulching so we can also use that on our growing spaces to reduce the weeds so we've seen the temporary compost bins we've seen the underground worm farms this is my wormery I haven't been adding much to this because I've been putting it in the temporary compost bins but just to help the worms out I'll give them uh, some manure and now I'm going to top it off with leaves there hasn't been much rat activity but I'm sure they'll uh, find comfort in those and turn my bin if they end up uh, coming here this time so now that is literally it I'll be dropping the lid now until February or March when we'll harvest all this material and make my homemade compost and there's where all the juices come out and again I'm struggling uh, to keep up with the juices I spread that onto my leaf mould bins this bin to the right uh, had uh, 2022 so that had uh, 18 bags last year we had 25 bags in 2021 
and that's compacting down nicely and the 25 bags are now in there and normally all that material in that bin in 2021 would have gone through my trommel and we'd have had some more com uh, leaf mould like you saw earlier that's now 18 bags so it's quite a big area but uh, I kept topping these up and topping them up and they kept sinking and topping them up again but it's uh, I don't mulch or chop my leaves I just collect them as they fall and pop them in here some people add grass clippings and etc hopefully it'll dry out and sometime next year I can get these emptied uh, put through the trommel once the pile of soil has gone and we've built some new beds there under the shade of the uh, the holly trees and it looks like the birds are taking the berries very quickly now so are we going to have a bad winter because there's so many berries about we shall see if you haven't got a room uh, to put your leaves in bays then you can put them into some black bags I'll get quite a few black bags when the cannabis growers unscrupulously dump all their material uh, so just for demonstration purposes uh, we put a, a load of leaves in there they need a good soaking and then you need to put holes in the bottom to let the water out and then the worms will find their way in the worms will probably be clinging the worm eggs will probably be clinging onto the leaves when you scrape them up the worms will say yes there's plenty of leaves here let's uh, lay some eggs and then the baby worms will emerge uh, in the bag hopefully and that can then be thrown behind a shed or placed behind a shed or somewhere where you don't need access uh, through uh, throughout uh, the next 12 months such an easy way of getting a little bit remember that bag you need 25 back 25 of those bags to get yourself 20 to 25 bags of uh, good uh, material but it's well worth doing so these are all my bins we added these sheets polycarbonate sheets to collect water any space that you can collect water is very important so this is my leaf mold bin where we've just got that material out I've still got a little bit left this is all my homemade compost this is from uh, beginning of the year we add it to the potatoes the potatoes finish it off any organic material that still hasn't rotted down will do over the summer and autumn before you do your potato reveals this is the cocoa koi and compost with the added perlite that we find that's unscrupulously dumped and this is uh, some cocoa koi that we find uh, I'll keep them in separate bins for now but this is some material that I mulched and it's it got a little bit contaminated I'm going to move that because a bit of OCD OC, uh, you know <laughs> I need it to be right and of course all this was built for free using uh, recycled uh, materials uh, you need to do as much as you can when you uh, garden on a budget because there are some things that you do need to spend some money on that you can't easily get your hands on some people can get their hands on materials that I can't vice versa you have to adapt uh, to what you can get and of course whatever the weather throws at us I use wood chips in the footpath after three years I harvest those and add them to the beds so I might be harvesting more wood chips than I am leaf mold in the future but what's what's ever easiest on our bodies so a lot of people do use mulching over the winter I've got some uh, winter tears uh, there and here I think I needed to put more in I tried to space them here's some more of the green manure um, white clover so I might end up mulching this up uh, red Russians coming through slowly be patient the uh, elephant garlic uh, the green beans that we used uh, previously are doing really well and uh, one or two have been uh, slightly scorched 
by uh, the very cold weather we've had recently. That white clover is doing a little bit better. But I think it's more of a summer crop so that uh, you actually physically rest the bed and then uh, dig it in or mulch it uh, over the autumn. So this little job was supposed to be just a little quick half an hour on the allotment before it gets uh, dark but obviously filming oh, I've just spent uh, 11 minutes uh, talking to you instead of doing some work so I'm going to crack on. Happy gardening to you all till next time my friends. Draw for now.